Today on Monkey Life. Alison's on an emergency mission to the Midlands to collect to Jeffroy's marmoset, separated from his sibling. So the other one, where we did We don't it know come? where he's ended up. He, he got sold on to somebody else and then he's been sold on since. But he's not the only new arrival. The primate care team get a big surprise at breakfast. They're clinging on really tightly. All fingers and toes are there, so they look pretty good. And Seamus bags a bounty of fruit. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. I'm shocked. This animal is living in fear of its life at all times. The park provides a home for more than 260 primates from 24 different species. Alison is on yet another marmoset rescue mission. This time, she's heading to Nottingham to collect a Jeffroy's marmoset called Gizmo. The timing couldn't have been worse. We haven't been bringing many animals in for a couple of reasons. We're pretty full at the park with all of our pet trade marmosets, um, but also it's locked down right now. So unless it's an emergency, we're not really going out and about. But I've deemed this now an emergency. The owner's very concerned. Gizmo was one of a set of twins, but was split from his sibling. He's only young, but he's already had numerous owners. He now lives with Emma and her family, who, concerned for his welfare, bought him for £1,000. Oh, everybody's here. The family realised quite quickly that marmosets don't make good pets and contacted Alison for help. We've had him for about three months. Uh, we did a lot of research, what my daughters did, Ellie and Lois, online, of how to look after him and what they eat. Um, and that's where we started to realise that he was actually lonely with the calls he was making. Um, so we've just gone from there, basically. Gizmo lives in a cage in one of the children's bedrooms. Do all of your clothes smell of marmoset? Mm -hmm. No, it, it, it's not really that bad. You kind of get used to the smell. Yeah. But um, our friends have come around, my friend came around. It does smell like monkey quite a bit in here. Although the park is full, the recent loss of an elderly marmoset opened up a space for Gizmo, who was near the top of Alison's long list of animals in need. She's keen to gather as much background and information from Emma as she can. So, how did you even hear about him? A friend was, um, had got two of them mm -hmm. um, and said, did we want one? So, the other one had gone, so we decided to take Gizmo. And so, the other one, where we did it go? We don't know where he's ended up. He, he got sold on to somebody else and then he's been sold on since. Gizmo's current diet is cause for concern something common amongst well-meaning owners who don't understand the complex needs of small monkeys. You, you say treat box. The only things we can to... get him to eat. OK, so this is his right. food box. Yes, along with fruit that we've got in the kitchen uh, that we do try, but he seems to prefer grapes over anything else. Time to meet Gizmo. Hey, little man. Hey, Giz. Gizmo! The family have spent a considerable amount of money trying to make the young marmoset's life comfortable. But what he really needs is access to the outdoors, companionship of his own kind, and an appropriate diet. Yeah, you want to try that? Alison tries to gain Gizmo's trust by offering him waxworms, a favourite with marmosets. Mmm, tasty. Oh, we like that. Tasties. He's confident enough to take the food direct from Alison's hand. Hey, chubby man. Hey, chubby man. Good boy. Oh, that one went down really quick. The difficult part will be enticing Gizmo into a travel box. 
Alison baits the inside with plenty of treats, hoping the youngster can be tempted in. Okay, so maybe we'll line the cage up and just see if you walk in. But Gizmo resists. So, after 20 minutes, Alison enlists the help of a familiar face. And a favourite food. Marshmallow. He's just sneaky with his tail. He likes to make his tail linger. But I can lower it behind his back if he's in. As long as he's in, Elias, you can lower it on his tail. He's in. <laughs> there you go. It does the trick. Gizmo is safe and secure inside the travel box. I know. Oh, my God, I wish I could give you all a hug. Time for a few emotional goodbyes. Good little man, I know. Oh, you see that? He looked at me and went, oh. <laughs> I know. Okay. But Emma and her family know it's for the best. We didn't know he could eat wax worms, I think they're called. Um, we thought he was supposed to have bottled water and he could actually have tap water. Um, there's, we have done quite a lot of research, but she did tell us quite a few things that we didn't know. I'm actually happy for I'm really happy that he's actually going to Monkey World and he'll be with other marmosets. Oh, OK. Right, thank you very much. You're welcome to come yeah. down any time. I'll give you... Um, I don't have anybody else's, but I'll let you know as soon as I'll give you an update on the road. All right, then. Thank you very much. Bye. It's a 200-mile journey back to Dorset, where the team are waiting to welcome Gizmo to his new home. For many years, the 14 chimpanzees who make up the Bachelor Boys were notorious for their rowdy and boisterous behaviour. These days, it's all a bit different. The chimps have mellowed, and age is catching up with some of them. It's been going on for a little while with these guys that we'll see a lot of the time they are just spending time chilling out, grooming each other, um, in, sitting and enjoying the sun. It generally is a bit quieter than it was. You know, they're, they're a group that we, we monitor closely and um, they're a lot more mellow than they used to be. But something's happening today that could spark some interest amongst the bachelors and pique their curiosity. The chimp team, with the help of the maintenance crew, have a new addition to their territory. It's a large silver birch tree, which needed to be felled for safety reasons and is being erected in their enclosure. It's the sort of thing their bachelor chimps should relish. The tree is enormous, almost double the size of the tallest climbing frame, and needs to be properly secured. Animal director Jeremy is on hand to supervise and make sure everything is safe for the chimps. Just beware of the branches when they pull them off. Satisfied, he gives the thumbs up. With the tree secure, the primate care team scatter breakfast throughout the enclosure. It'll give the chimps something else to think about if they get overexcited. The boys are released, and there's lots of excited hooting as they approach the tree trunk. Mojo is the first to climb onto a platform for a closer look. But he's thinking of his stomach. He gives the tree a cursory glance and sets about finding breakfast. The majority of the chimps make their excitement known, but the large number of apples and nectarines scattered around the enclosure appear to be the reason. Someone's told Seamus an apple a day keeps the vet away, but his approach is a little extreme. Butch sits near the tree, but takes little notice. It's all about the fruit for him too. He's no longer leader of the group, and these days has more time to relax and enjoy himself. With the high rankers concentrating on the food, some of the lower ranking chimps have a chance to investigate the tree trunk. Kiko tries out the bark, as does Freddy. Gypsy considers attempting a bird's eye view from the top, but then has second thoughts. 
It's been a few months since Jester's successful operation to have a tumour removed from his lip. And he's recovering well. His lip has healed amazingly. We're currently weaning him off the medication that he was put on straight after his operation. Um, so we're still c closely monitoring it for any signs of change in the skin in his lip. Um, and regularly taking photographs of it so that the vets can review it. But it's, it's looking amazing. The group are undergoing a transition in the pecking order, with some of the older boys taking a back seat and the likes of Mojo rising through the ranks. It can create tension, particularly when something new and exciting is happening. But not like the old days. They would probably have been a bit more raucous about it um, than they were this time. And they might have had more of a, um, a bust up about who got to go up there first. Um, but as it was, I mean, we did put food out at the same time. So though, because the big lads were focused on eating the food, it meant that the little guys got a chance to go and explore it first. The new addition to the enclosure may not have sparked the excitement of the past, but it's staying put and it's something the chimps will explore in their own time. But there are plans afoot which may change the group's dynamic in the very near future. The team constantly monitor all the individual primates and their group dynamics. Making changes to their routines can help manage stress. The most numerous at the park are the five groups of capuchins. 17-year-old Eriko is one of the park's youngest leaders, ably backed up by his second-in-command, Sean. Together they're in charge of another ten, mainly ageing capuchins. During the day they have the run of the fantastic outdoor enclosure, where everyone has plenty of personal space. But at night it's very different. They're sort of very lucky in the daytime. They've obviously got access to all the trees, the big enclosure. It's just when they have to come into the house at night, it's all very intense. And as I say, Sean and Erico are just a bit much for anyone, really. They're, they're overexcitable, they're loud, and they're just a bit boisterous. They, they don't really know what they're doing half the time. There's just, particularly Erico, he's just, he's a very bright individual, but there's just too much testosterone there, and he just can't control himself. To help the five oldest low rankers avoid the evening free for all, Toby and the team have devised a new nightly routine. What we did was over the summer, we gradually built up this little subgroup by giving them the access to the cage enclosure overnight, so they had lots of space. And so now we have five little individuals in that group, and now they have the playroom and three bedrooms every single night, and it's going really well. They, they've really settled down, and it, it seems to have done them all wonders. So they, they've all got a bit of companionship and a bit of friendship, and um, they all come in very happily at night most nights. It's time for the group's evening meal. Toby calls them in. Come on, guys, everyone in. Sean, Erica, Cara, come on. Now comes the tricky part, separating the subgroup from the rest. But capuchins are quick learners and have settled into the new routine. There are five in the subgroup, Ringo, Marlow, Abby, Scarlet, or Wildcourt, and Caesar the only one rescued from the British pet trade. The team have laid out an evening buffet supper, consisting of rotten logs loaded with mealworms. Perfect for hungry capuchins who love to forage. And as an added treat, Toby has provided whole frozen onions. They'll have to work hard to break them down. Caesar is sticking to foraging for now. Caesar is a is a proper little character. He is he is very human focused. Um, we've had some sort of mixed ones on his ages. I think he's about 31 now. He, he's starting to show his age and look like a little old man. Um, 
Managing animals that come from the pet trade is often difficult. Quite often, they, they don't have the social skills required. And although Caesar came from a sort of a, he, he had a good background and he was well looked after and he lived with Phoebe, he still sort of struggled socially at times and struggled in a big group. And even now, although he is in the subgroup, he is still wary. He is bottom of the group. So if someone's going to get told off, it's going to be Caesar. He will scream and run and make a fuss, and that draws attention to himself. But this evening, everything's calm as the other four take their normal, relaxed approach to supper. Abby demonstrates she's recovered from her recent dental operation when the vet removed six rotten teeth. She forages enthusiastically and has no problem eating. The nighttime separation scheme has been a success, and this elderly subgroup are quite at ease with each other. There's been some overnight news for the small monkey team. The marmoset population at the park has increased by two. Good girl. Marge Simpson has just given birth. So both babies are actually huge. Um, for just less than a day old, they are enormous. Uh, she was very big. We, uh, a couple of months ago, thought that there was a very good chance that she'd come in pregnant because she'd started to swell. Um, by the end of it, her belly was ginormous. Um, so she's had a very healthy sized pair of twins, very, very big babies, but they look wonderful. They're clinging on really tightly. All fingers and toes are there, so they look pretty good. Marge is already mum to Bart and Maggie and has experience of bringing up youngsters, albeit under pet trade conditions. But for her established offspring, this will be a new experience. However, they seem to be coping well with the new infants. With the marmosets, actually, the rest of the family will carry the babies round for the majority of the time. Mum will just take them back for feeding. Um, and the two youngsters have actually both done that. Bart, straight away, really interested. Um, he wanted to, to help carry from almost the first sort of hour. Um, and today, Maggie has, for the first time, taken one of the babies as well. So she is now carrying one down round two which is great because it's exactly what should be, be happening. They should work together as a family and everybody else should be helping mum out with the, the heavy lifting. With the ever-increasing waiting list of pet trade marmosets needing rescue, space at the park is limited. Unfortunately, Marge was already pregnant when she arrived four months ago. A marmoset's gestation period is around five months and care staff immediately noticed her swollen belly. Bart is almost certainly the father. That means that they are interbred babies um, because in the pet trade these guys were kept in a small cage with just the three of them and unfortunately it is a situation that we see from, from the pet trade and from animals like this being kept with no knowledge of, of how to look after them. One of the first things we actually did when we got these three was book a vet day for Bart to be vasectomised to try and prevent this from happening. But unfortunately, it seems we were too late on that um, because she was already pregnant. Despite this, the new twins look healthy. The team hope that, with the addition of the new babies, this marmoset family will remain a tight-knit, contented unit. The marmoset newborns won't be the only newcomers to the park today. The team are preparing for the imminent arrival of Gizmo, who Alison has just rescued from a home in Nottingham. So the plan is we'll get him in, get him settled, gives us a couple of days to assess him and see what his mobility's like, if he's got any obvious problems. Uh, we'll send faecals off to make sure he's nice and, and healthy and there's nothing we need to worry about there. Uh, and then we'll start thinking about introductions. Um, and we do currently have a male called Solomon who's on his own after his partner Hazel, who was a very old girl, finally passed away. Um, so we're hoping that he'll want a, a new male friend and that the boys will play nicely together. So we'll see. It's been a long day for Alison and the young marmoset, and it's not over yet. Gizmo needs to be settled into his new home, where he'll have lots of inquisitive neighbours for company. Where are you, little man? Bad. He's a bit sad and shy right now, but... Still got no, a bit grey going on the face. And, you know, whether he's hybrid or... I think he's young. It's OK. Hey, sorry, little man. Yeah, I know. It's all right. It's all right. The team walk the young marmoset across to his new home. For now, he'll have a bedroom of his own. But he'll be close to other marmosets and be able to see and hear them. If he gets a clean bill of health, 
he can be introduced to Solomon and hopefully become his new housemate. Steph takes the opportunity to weigh Gizmo while he's still inside the travel crate. Once he's released, she'll weigh the crate again to get an accurate weight. Steph hangs up a few familiar items from Gizmo's previous home to help the marmoset settle in. We've got so many marmosets here, we really didn't have a specific appropriate partner, although we have two single males, one of which hopefully he'll go with. So I agreed to take him, but mainly because I think he was at a point where he was either gonna go really downhill quickly, or we could save a young Jeffroy's Marmoset and turn him back into a healthy individual because the diet and the environment just were not suitable and the owners knew it. So at least they've done the right thing. With everything set, Steph opens the box to let Gizmo into his new bedroom. Come on, little man. Good boy. After a nervous start, he begins exploring. Even replying to contact calls from the other marmosets. Yeah, he's basically checking out his new enclosure. He can obviously hear the other marmosets in the house, which is making him quite sort of overexcited, I think. Um, so yeah, lots to check out, lots of new smells, lots of new sounds. So I would expect him to be a bit antsy and a bit sort of in a rush to check everything out. Gizmo will be closely monitored over the next few days, put on a healthy diet and given vitamin supplements. He'll also be tested for parasites. But for now, there's plenty of time to settle down, get used to the surroundings and look forward to a bright future with new friends. Next time on Monkey Life. Vets are called to the park due to serious concerns for the health of elderly chimp Zoe. And Alison is apprehensive. It's always a nerve wracking day, so getting myself all geared up um, and hope that everything goes okay. And the lemurs get to grips with a new tree stump down at Malagasy.